Competition, exhibition, intuition, superstition, proper diction. Pretty sure James Hetfield's just kind of saying words sometimes. Really got hit the road, but everything printed right. So that's nice. This little guy, he'll probably be done when we get back. Huh? Let's just hit the road though. I don't even know why I opened these curtains up. But uh, yeah, I wanna actually try and get there actually early instead of always seeming to arrive on time or a little bit late. Got one little care package to deliver to Kleins, but then it's straight to printer town. Kinda lied, I'm getting coffee then going to printer town. One does not simply walk to printer town. One does not simply take it down to funky town. Gotta get that dinero too. Extra dish. Random thought, but I was thinking about when I was a game programmer, I got to a point where I could basically make from scratch any NES, Genesis, SNES style game. Um, and it made me realize it's a lot like AI image generators in that like you can type in just about anything to an AI image generator and it's going to show you that. You kind of have to know how to tell it to make that and it has limitations. But being a game programmer, designer is very similar, except instead of instantly, it takes weeks or months. Kind of makes me, or I mean, it can take, depends on how complex the thing is. I can't imagine how long it would take to program like a Final Fantasy game just by yourself. That's why they have teams. But anyway, makes me wonder how long it's gonna be till AI generated games are a thing where you just type in something and it makes that game like instantly. No trip is complete without it. Some people are drunkards. I'm a dunkard. Garland, Texas, here we go. Got a yuppie playlist for this one. been a really really pleasant drive we're about an hour away this guy actually said that he had some problems with his other printers so I'm gonna take a look I would do it for free but he might be offering some money off the printer so that ain't so bad this place is actually kind of nice got one of these guys a Sabaro Stromboli for five bucks actually looks pretty good any of you uh, 90s or 80s babies you remember going to the mall, going to Sabaro. What I used to do, man, this was such a hack back in the day. Tell me in the comments if you guys used to do this. At the end of the day when the mall was closing, Sabaro or whatever pizza place in the mall would have all of these pizzas that were just sitting out and they can't sell them. So you could buy all of their pizza, the entire board for like 30 bucks usually, something like that. So it's, man, one time I got like five, five big pizzas, but they're not like normal large pizzas. They're the big ones at the mall that are like that wide. It was very, very unhealthy. Just a couple minutes away. Interestingly, this is not very far away from Sanger. I should have just picked up both printers in one trip. Yeah, I think we're actually kind of near Dallas. I love this lighting right here, looks so good. Okay, these don't look too bad. Well, we're here. He didn't give me an apartment number. I hopefully won't have to knock on every door. Now to find that. All right, we're here at the guy's house. He's got a pretty, this is him. I'll, I'll, uh, you, got, you have online stuff, that, like your music? Yeah, well. Um, I can I, link to it. My, uh, uh, my, uh, Instagram for cosplay for my 3D printing is uh, right. Black Cosplay King, BLK Cosplay King. I'll put it in the uh, description. Yeah, for sure. But this is his workshop. As you guys can see, he is also a paint aficionado. <laughs> Rip de friggin' sweets. Got some really cool stuff going on. Other than that, it hasn't really had that much use. Okay, that dude was super cool. It's always great getting to meet other 3D printing people. He had a sweet setup. 
Like if I was basically just doing it as a hobby, it would look exactly like that. Like I said, he's got a cool Instagram. We're gonna put it in the um, description. I gave him a card so we can see this. He's probably gonna watch this. Now that we got that done, I think we're gonna find a bite to eat or something. Okay, I looked some stuff up and there actually is a thrift store that's still open even though it's kind of the evening, starting to be the evening. So we're gonna go there. So we are, I think this would be Dallas. I don't know for sure. We were in Garland, but we are at a thrift town. Sorry, thrift giant. Sadly, not my size. Not the absolute best, but did get a couple of fine choices. Another thrift store, just honestly like a few hundred feet away. Actually looks pretty good. This is a big one. Sadly, not my size. Whoa, I think we got a winner. Jackpot. Heck yeah. Well, a couple of things. We'll review it when we get home. There was a Chinese place I had passed a couple of times. The other day when I went to Sanger, I saw this place too. I think we're gonna go there. See, this place looks pretty legit. It's huge. So I would say kind of nothing special, not bad. The sushi was actually at the upper end of good for buffet sushi. For about $21, it's kind of at the upper end of worthwhile. Maybe I meant the lower end of worthwhile. Not bad, but nothing I'm gonna be returning to. Unfortunately, it is a little too late to be wearing shades. We're gonna need gas somewhat soon, but I think we're going to begin the arduous journey back. Okay, so I went inside and apparently they ran out of fuel. I don't think that's ever happened to me before, but we've got more than enough to get pretty far down the road. So we'll just stop at some gas station out in the country, I guess. Gas station number two, filling up. Not as far of a trip as the other ones. This is only like two and a half hours away, but this is gonna be really sweet. This guy who had this, um, this S5 really took care of it. You guys saw the kind of stuff he was doing, man really beautiful setup makes me want to make the shop more aesthetically pleasing i mean it's got its moments it's pretty cool but that guy was on point we're filled up we are ready to go non-stop until we hit the knack attack in honor of my newfound friend today who was in fact somebody who records rnb we are going to play my rnb playlist oh man Check out Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Yes, I know that Chaka Khan, I Feel For You, came out in the 80s. Don't eat me alive. This hustle was wrong. Super fly. You go the only game you know is do or die. I, 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 trying to get on. That's what he's trying to do, y'all. Trying to get over. Super fly. It's mean. You wouldn't know. It takes all to hurt me. Stopping for a little drink, a drink. We're about halfway there. Decided to get a sugar free giant Coke. Probably has all kinds of weird chemicals in it, but it's delicious. <laughs> And we got random people walking in the middle of the street. I love these little spots. It really is just random, middle of nowhere, Texas. I know I always say that. It's just kind of funny. Oh, one of these places is still open. Mm, coffee. I think this is Jacksonville, Texas. It's funny how like every state seems to have a Springfield and a Jacksonville. 
Oh man, they've got a Wendy's here. Weirdly, neither Nacogdoches nor Lufkin seems to have a Wendy's. If they do have a Wendy's, well, if Lufkin has a Wendy's, I have never seen it. It's weird how much you can crave Wendy's. Like, it doesn't seem like a big deal until you can't go there. That Baconator is no joke. Man, so much bacon, so much flavor, so much heart disease. I'm probably not gonna be doing any more road trips um, until at least after Christmas. The reason being, we just don't need any more printers. I think I've got, I think eight fully functional, reliable S5s is probably gonna be enough. Map says I am somewhere called Alto, Texas but it pretty much just looks like a bunch of trees. You know, I've kind of thought a bit about why we feel nostalgia. When you think about it, for the vast majority of human history, life did not change in any meaningful way with humans. Like, your father lived the same life that his father lived, that their grandfather lived. We were in a steady state culturally. And I think that's pretty inarguable that that's what we came from. Really, in a lot of ways, this only stopped 100 to maybe 200 years ago max. So I think humans have this instinct that like, there's just something in us, at least in some of us, where we, in some primordial way, kind of realize that things shouldn't be changing as quickly as they are. You know, the fact, the idea that the world you grew up in, no matter how old you are, the idea that the world you personally grew up in is different from the world today is something that 90 some percent of our ancestors could not even imagine. We're always doing this weird thing where we think modernity is normal, but we live in <laughs> by far the most abnormal era of history. So yeah, a lot of times when I'm driving out on these country roads away from everything, there's just something about it that feels consistent and familiar, I think, because for the most part, these roads out in the country are the same as they've always been for my entire life. They look the same, driving on them is the same. And there's something about that that almost does make me nostalgic because very few parts of life are like that. Yeah, the hyper novelty that we live with, I think of it as just one of the ultimate double-edged swords because it's, super amazing in a lot of ways. You know, we've eliminated diseases like polio and mumps and stuff like stuff like that. I actually got scarlet fever when I was a kid, which was so strange. But it's like you kind of see this process we went through where it's almost inevitable that a lot of our social fabric and common understandings and stuff were going to get destroyed because the world we're living in, I mean, it's, it's more complex than this, but one thing is the world we're living in changes so much. It's hard to have sort of norms and customs and things like that, cultural norms, in a culture that is just constantly changing. Another real problem with hyper novelty is like one aspect of morality that's fairly universal is like anytime you're valuing something that's more long-term over something that's more short-term, that's generally sort of moral and the opposite tends to be sort of immoral. To take a basic example, the easiest way to get a TV is to break into your neighbor's house and take their TV if you have no money. If you don't have any money and you want a TV, what you have to do is get a job and save up some money and eventually you can buy a TV. This analogy is getting a little old because TVs are getting cheaper and cheaper. When I was growing up, buying a TV was a big deal, so whatever. 
Now the connection there is if we live in a culture that is constantly changing, that means that we can predict a lot less. We can anticipate a lot less because we have less certainty that the future will be like the past. In fact, at this point, we are extremely certain that the future will not be like the past. So the moral hazard to this is it's going to make us have to think more short term by definition, at least in some ways. One of the things that's really great about philosophy and ethics and, and these sorts of things is like moral principles and stuff are things that do not change. You know, so even if the future is going to look really strange and different, the whole point of discovering those principles is even though maybe how it manifests might look different, these are unchanging principles and always have been. But a lot of people aren't going to ab like understand abstract concepts and be able to get their minds around it. So, yeah, that is kind of the double-edged sword of modernity. Even though a lot of problems get solved and stuff, man, there are all kinds of problems that are associated with just having an extremely hyper-novel world that we live in. I mean, that might actually be one of the better arguments against the idea or the theory of moral progress. There's a lot of people that think that moral progress is sort of inevitable, like people are going to become more moral. Perhaps a somewhat solid argument against that is just that progress itself inhibits people's proclivity to be moral because it makes any kind of technological or whatever progress, any kind of progress that fundamentally alters society a lot, makes the future more difficult to anticipate. And if people can't sort of anticipate the future as easily as they once did, it's harder to think long-term, and long-term thinking is pretty inherent to morality. I don't want to make it like I'm 100% convinced of this. It's just a thought that recurs to me, and it does seem like... It seems like there really might be something there. Really, it's more like... It's more like a recurring fear, I would say. Back in beautiful Nakadagi. You can check out anytime you like. And you can also check back in anytime you like. A nice, hospitable home for the new printer. Oh, we are here. Oh, giant, giant stretch. On trip days, kind of seems customary now to do the, the gratitude thing outside. I think we'll continue. Well, Needless to say, grateful for the printer today. It's fun to see somebody else's printing setup. Somebody that's very, very into it. Really doing great with that cosplay stuff. Um, yeah, I love it. Feels so good to have eight of these S5s going into Christmas. It's like, that is a big deal. That is what you want gonna be just churning out these sharks man it's gonna be crazy kind of grateful for a nice relaxing drive only like two and a half hours slightly more it's just a good feeling like don't know what that is so let me know in the comments what you're grateful for and the projects you're working on and the thoughts you have really anything your small moments of joy let me know in the comments. Peace out.